Potter question for your entrance exam. This is a child with Harlequin ichthyosis. So, the clinical features include, first of all, there will be marked skin thickening, there will be ridging and cracking of the skin, forming horny plates. So, let us discuss first of all Harlequin ichthyosis. It is also sometimes called as Harlequin type ichthyosis. So, inheritance is autosomal recessive in these individuals. So, first of all, they show autosomal recessive inheritance. The gene involved is ABCA12 gene. This gene is normally a lipid transporter in the keratinocytes, which is necessary for lipid transport into lamellar granules. If this protein is absent, what will happen? There will be defective lipid transport and deficiency of long chain ceramides in the skin, producing a thickened, dehydrated, cracking kind of skin, which is the feature of these individuals. So, clinically, if you see, this is the classic description. It can be a spotter question for your entrance exam. This is a child with Harlequin ichthyosis. So, the clinical features include, first of all, there will be marked skin thickening, there will be ridging and cracking of the skin, forming horny plates. So, this horny plate appearance, also called as Greek warrior armored appearance, although this term is no longer used, uh, is, is the classical presentation of Harlequin ichthyosis. It is commonly mentioned as a spotter in your entrance exams. Due to this uh, intense cracking, you will find that the child is unable to move, there are deformities of the body which are produced and in between these cracks, there may be loss of water, there may be bleeding and the, it, the raw areas may get infected. So, these children are characterized by disfigurement of the face, there is a flattened nose and ears. They will have severe atropion of the eye and chemosis of the eye will happen. This uh, chemosis will happen due to exposure keratitis. Lips are everted and gaping and joint and limb motility will be significantly reduced. The hair and nails are often found to be absent. If Even if hair are present, they sometimes are a part of the, the manifestation itself. They are encased in these plates. So, if you do histology, what are the features you will find? You will find that there is hyperkeratosis, which I have said, it is present in all ichthyotic disorders. There will be accumulation of lipid droplets within corneocytes, also called as keratinocytes. And there will be absence of normal laminar gland granules. Normally, lipid droplets should not accumulate in keratinocytes, they should be going to lamella, lamellar granules. But in these patients, that transporter function is affected, leading to the abnormality. So, Harlequin ichthyosis, what are the complications you will find? These children will have poor feeding ob for obvious reasons. They will have severe skin infections, particularly Staph aureus and Candida are one of the frequent pathogens implicated. They, these children will develop respiratory failure and even if frank respiratory failure is not present, features of hypoventilation in the form of progressively increasing PaCO2 can sometimes be seen in these individuals. They have a very high mortality. Uh, the exact life expectancy is not known, but there was a patient who is described in literature that she was born in the year 1984 and till now that is on in June 2021 as I am recording this lecture, she is alive, well and doing great. So, this is a condition which has high mortality in general, but some children do tend to survive provided the neonatal period they uh, come through. So, what is the treatment you will give in these patients? First of all, high oral on or IV fluid intake will be needed because the insensible losses in between the cracks is very high. Secondly, you need to apply on the skin some emulsifying ointments or petroleum jelly. These days, urea containing creams have been formulated which are very effective. If lesions are too thick, you can use keratolytic agents, keratolytic thick keratin pad which is forming in the area where the elbow is present. So, the child will not be able to flex or extend the elbow to allow restriction to happen so that atrophy and contractures do not develop in such localized areas where the thickening is too much even by the standards of the child, you can use agents like propylene glycol, but they usually have an adjunct role. They are not the primary therapy. In severe cases, oral retinoids like acetretin are found to be useful. Oral retinoids, the dose mentioned in Nelson is 1 milligram per kg body weight per day. But overall, 
treatment is supportive and outcomes are not that great. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Preplada.